Hello everyone, Paul from Foil Drive here and super excited to announce we've finished developing the external patch antenna system. It's taken a while, but we wanted to make sure it was perfected. It's a fantastic solution. And for those small percentage of boards around the world that have full carbon tracks, this is the solution. And it also has some other really cool benefits for winging applications and some downwind applications. So we're gonna show you how it works, tell you how to install it and stick around because this is exciting stuff. Let's go. So through the process of testing and developing Gen 2, we tested hundreds of boards, but unfortunately we can't test everything in the world. And there are some boards with full carbon tracks and full carbon wrap. So those boards are gonna need this technology, but we wanna make sure people understand, do not assume that you have to use this. Go and check out the Masterclass series because it's become very evident in our testing and customer feedback that proper knowledge of how to use the controller in relation to your board is really important. And a lot of people don't actually have to use this if they get the right technique. But the good thing is if you do have a board that needs it, the tech's now here, it works really well, and we're so proud to be able to offer it. So what exactly is the problem with carbon? Well, carbon on its own right isn't a problem, it's just where it has been used. So all of these boards here that we'll be testing today are fully carbon fiber. It's just the one exception, this board here, it has carbon fiber tracks. Now, when you have something that's carbon fiber board and carbon fiber tracks, you're really not giving the signal much opportunity to penetrate into the Gen 2 unit. So if you have a board with carbon tracks, it may still work for you. And there are plenty of people riding those boards right now, even without this technology, but there are some boards where you can't. So by putting the patch antenna system on the board, you are eliminating the board out of the equation and then therefore it doesn't matter if you have carbon tracks or not or whatever board it is, it won't matter. And you also don't need to use the foam in the tracks because it's irrelevant. This is now doing the job and it takes this entire thing out of the equation. So what exactly is the patch antenna? It's a very special technology that we've actually had developed from scratch. It's a patent pending application and patent pending technology. So we've got a very specially tuned antenna system that allows us to receive a signal, send it through a cable and redistribute it into the Gen 2 box, which again eliminates the board. So we've deliberately made this completely passive. You can leave it on the board and remove your Gen 2 unit. And there's no annoying plugs or little connectors that you have to try and screw into something that will inevitably get full of sand and grit over time when you use it. So fully passive, stick it on your board and you can leave it on your board. Lately, I've been leaving my patch antenna installed on my Takuma and I don't use the patch antenna on any of these other boards because I don't need it. So that's been super helpful being able to just leave it installed on that board that specifically needs it. And when I come to using it, there's no additional install. I just simply drop my Gen 2 on, put my four bolts in and hit the water. So when I say it's wireless, clearly there's a wire involved. It's a wireless signal transmission that we're referring to. This wire is 100% needed if you want to take the signal from the top of your board and bring it down underneath and deliver it to the bottom of the board. So don't confuse wireless as in there's no wires in the equation. It is a wireless connection in a signal sense, but it is actually wireless connection to your box, which is super crucial when you want to leave it installed on your board permanently. You can simply take your Gen 2 on and off with no additional work than if you were to take it on and off a normal board. The other fantastic thing about this is it's completely passive and there's no batteries, there's no power. It doesn't draw any power from your Gen 2. It doesn't need to be recharged. You just simply put it on your board, tighten up the bolts and go and use it. It's also maintenance free, so it's set and forget and just have fun. All right, let's talk about installation. So as always with foil drive, we're not doing this in some pretty showroom, pretending we're out on the beach, in the sand, gonna do it in the real world. So what do you need to do? It's pretty basic, thankfully. On the back of the unit, it actually has written, this side faces the board. So it keeps it simple. You want this side facing the board and the foil drive logo facing up. So you simply put it over the track where you would normally put your Gen 2 and that's about it. The only things you want to consider is, is, do you need slightly longer bolts? So this adds two millimeters to the overall thickness 
And if your bolts felt like they were not engaging with a huge amount of thread before, you may want to consider slightly longer bolts. We do now offer 65 millimeter and 85 millimeter bolt alternatives on the website for precisely this reason, as opposed to the 60 and 80s that come standard in the kit. So if you do need them, we've got them ready to go. Two, you don't need the foam anymore. You can still use it if you would like, but the foam in the tracks really doesn't do anything. So use it if you do, use it if you don't. To install it, I now simply just get my Gen 2 and I put it on top. You just want to make sure that you put it to the side of this piece and there's a little black piece at the back which stops the unit from going too far back but effectively the patch antenna is the same shape as the box so you just want the two to match up and the bolt holes to align and then you put your bolts in and you do it up like you normally would and you're ready to rock and roll all right so i've got my four bolts in now on this one here i'm just showing you that i've actually still got quite a bit of thread there so I don't need longer bolts in this particular board, but that's also got something to do with the fact that this base plate has nice deep grooves for the head of the bolt. So again, check your bolt length, and make sure you've got the appropriate one. We love a good bit of tape in four drive. It's small, it's light, and it's hydrodynamic, and you just peel it off when you're done, and there's almost no drag. So for me, on this particular board, I'm going to pull the cable out nice and taut, and then I'm just gonna add a piece of tape running the full way down length of the board to hold it in place. Pull a bit of tape off, pull it taut, and a bit of tape there so it keeps it in line, then put the bit of tape across whilst it's straight. If you make sure the surface of your board is clean and not covered in wax or sunscreen and stuff like that, I've never actually had the tape come off because most boards actually have a very smooth surface which tape sticks very well to. So there we go. Now I've got to the nose of the board. I now need to flip it over and continue the last step. So for today, I'm just using simply a bit of double-sided tape. We will also have a plastic cradle that the antenna can sort of slide into if you want to make it multi-use. If you use good quality 3M stuff, it sticks really well and it's easy to peel off the board. So I'm going to put the antenna, for me, just on the nose here, right up there. Now I could have the antenna here, 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 wherever. I could even have the cable coming over the side and mount it there. It doesn't matter. As long as this is somewhere on top of the board, typically towards the nose, it's going to be out of the water, you're going to get signal. So I just run it in the middle. With taping, all you want to do to make sure that the tape doesn't come off is you don't want to have exposed edges into the water. You don't want to have exposed edge of tape and high speed water going into it because it wants to make it peel off. So I've kept this piece of tape here and I'm just gonna simply wrap it over the nose. So it's one continuous piece from the back all the way to the front. Now, all I have to do is just put a tiny bit on top to really make it look clean and to hold it in place. So, and just put a little tiny bit there. Again, I'm going to make sure that this leading edge tucks over and then with the flow of water so it doesn't get caught and pulled off. Cut that. Pull it straight. Stick it down. There we go. So. Now you could do a Anita job and something really fancy if you really want to. There's no right or wrong. Me personally, I just want to get it ready to go and get in the water. So as you can see, the cable now comes over the nose, tucks around, and I've got my antenna there. You don't need to tape it in any specific way. As long as it's securely attached, it will work. And again, as long as you can see the antenna and it's above the surface of the water, you will have perfect signal when you are standing on the board and the remote is anywhere in the vicinity. As you'll see in the video, 
This can be completely submerged under the water, and if your remote control goes near it, completely submerged under the water, you also get really good signal. So have it somewhere where it's close by and that works really well. For those of you run longer boards, we will do two cable options. Um, there'll be a longer cable and a shorter cable. So check that out on the website. This is obviously a four foot two prone board, it's tiny. This is a five foot four sort of mid-length. So we do offer two different types of cable. There is nothing wrong with curling a cable up if you choose to get an extra long one to use it on anything. But me personally, riding smaller boards and that's all I ride now, the shorter one will fit pretty much anything. This one would still fit the 5'4 perfectly, but if you've got an eight foot long uh, downwind sup, consider a longer cable. Again, I just want to reiterate the point, as long as the cable is straight, that's the most hydrodynamic way to have it in a straight line. And as long as your tape is stuck to a clean surface board, it will be fine. Don't have exposed edges facing the water. That will make it want to peel off as long as it wraps over and wraps over and goes with the water direction. That's all you need. So basic housekeeping, things I shouldn't have to say, but I will. You can't have this unsecured. You need to use the tape. And second of all, you can't just have the patch antenna somewhere else on the board. It should be clear, it needs to be under the unit and fully bolted together. Please also remember that you cannot attach this to your body. It is not designed to be as, used as a leg rope. It's not designed to be yanked on or pulled on. It's just designed to be stuck to the surface of the board. You do not need to attach it to anything other than the board. Okay, so we've got the Takuma Rising Sun 4.2 by 30 litre. This has been our go-to board since we found out about it for testing signal. It's the most impenetrable board we've ever found. Um, and it is unusable, unfortunately, uh, without the patch antenna. Prior to this point, totally unusable. So we're gonna demonstrate that in the water and then we're gonna put the patch antenna on and just show how much of a massive difference it makes. Even with it sitting on the surface as it is now, you can just find some spots. Well, there's a tiny spot there. Occasionally you can find some link, but the problem is as soon as you lie on it, in any capacity, it's just totally non-responsive. I've spent hours on this thing trying to get signal to go through it and Unfortunately, it just doesn't work. So the only way you can occasionally get signal is to empty all the water off the surface and move the controller around even now I'm <laughs> struggling to get it to okay right down the back over the top of the unit. There we go, got some link. But unfortunately that's not usable in the water, so it just will not run. But we put the patch antenna on and then the board is perfectly usable and it's fantastic. Again, the patch antenna on the surface of the board. This controller is anywhere within the vicinity of it, you're gonna have link. But if it's under the water, even though the controller's a fair way away from it, if it's off the surface of the board, it's not much use to me. If I get it near the patch antenna, I've got link. Anywhere near the cable, you get link. So the cable itself actually has an impact. But again, if I go way off the surface of this board, there's no connection because the board itself doesn't transmit. So it's gotta be near, or on the patch or anywhere around here and you're gonna have a link. So moving the controller around the surface of the board like you can on other boards won't make much difference when you're dealing with a board that has carbon track issues. You've gotta come back close to the antenna and the cable. The end cable is, is inductive as is the antenna. 
but as soon as the antenna comes out of the water, I've got signal anywhere. So that's about it. As long as you can see the antenna out of the water, you're going to have signal. It's going to be fantastic for winging. It's going to be fantastic for downwinding when you're standing on a tall board with a paddle. And look, in any case, if you're using the patch antenna, you're just going to get amazing signal. Um, it's just boils down to whether or not you think it's needed in your case. And if it is, it's available. And if not, enjoy your Gen 2 the way it is. Thanks for listening.